thanks for your divine protection. God, we ask that even as we come into um, areas that are unfamiliar to us, God, that you will surround us even with your angels. God, we are amazed at what, what you keep on doing for our island, this little place in Bermuda. When we hear about all that's going on around the world, still, Father, you show us favor. And God, we believe, we certainly believe that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. So God, we're thankful this morning as we come that we can honor you. And God, even while we are here, we recognize that you're in everywhere. We understand, God, that you know the number of years that are, that are on our head, God. And, and so you would even know the concerns that we have in each individual, God special to you. And we thank you for your son, Jesus the Christ. because we understand that by his side is First Lady. And God, we just thank you for her presence here this morning. God, we pray that you would give her what she needs even this morning. We thank you for your presence today. Allow us, God, to have a good time in you. And when we leave this place, God, we were careful to give you the honor and glory and share the good news of Jesus the Christ and what he's done for me and he's done for others. You're so good. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated in his presence. You know what, God, he, he does some strange things. He shows up at times when he, sometimes you would say, not now, but he shows up. Um, when I say not now is that um, you want to keep your composure. And uh, just knew that I think that something is going to happen today and uh, we need to be open for it. And um, I just pray that God moves by his spirit and that he would have his way and that anything that we do here is not for show. Um, and that he gets the glory and that we get so excited that when we leave this place I think that somebody out there who does not know our Lord and Savior I mean they don't know what they're missing out on a chance to have life eternally amen and so let's honor him today in this way we will welcome all those who are um, here today. I'm not going to delay because God is pushing me out of the way and I want to honor that. I do know that just before our pastor comes we have a special presentation I believe by um, Kalasia. So we're going to ask even at that time, this time um, if Kalasia will come and the praise team can go on down. Am I correct, Pastor? Okay, Pastor's going to come first. Thank you. Okay. 
Thank you, Elder Tooney. Uh, you need to come back this way, please. Can you, can you just please come for a moment? Because I understand it's something happening here today, a special celebration that, so you can't miss this. And uh, I know this is not what I normally do, but I'm gonna do it this morning. And uh, I understand that we, you, are celebrating 35 years today. Amen. Yes. All right. Would you go and stand by your wife for a minute, please? Now, I, I, don't, I don't really know the song like that, uh, you know. But we, we got, thank you very much. And can I get some help from somewhere? Because, it, you know, um, it's just a wonderful thing. And God has blessed the two of you wonderfully and tremendously. And uh, you stand and live as an example to the younger ones coming behind you and some of the ones that are in front of you as well. So as a congregation, we want to extend congratulations to 35 years today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, um, Somebody help me. Come on, choir. We're all the one big choir. Can you get closer to your hubby or you get closer to your wife? Something's got to happen. Happy. Celebrate 35 years. Happy, happy, happy anniversary. Happy, happy, happy anniversary. Happy, happy, happy anniversary. You celebrate 35 One more time. Let's do it one more time. Happy. And uh, before you go out the back, if you're going out the back, uh, this, this presentation uh, is kind of for you and uh, Sister Carol. Um, Kalasia is one of Tony's former students because she's getting ready to transition into Barclay and, uh, in September. And she has a, a three song medley that she's going to play for you. You may have heard one of the songs, uh, Tony. I'm sure that most of the uh, other congregation have never heard the first song. The second two songs you will recognize and um, everybody else will recognize as well. Kalasia is coming, she's budding, and um, so we turn it over to Kalasia for her three song medley for you this morning. Let me stay right there.
Turn in your Bibles, please, to Psalm 103. We'll be reading from verses 1 down to verse 5. And I heard uh, from the Lord, we are about two weeks before we conclude the series on wisdom. But I heard from the Lord to bring this this morning. And maybe Tony's on to something. I haven't called Tony. We haven't spoken about the word or anything. And um, I just felt led to bring this word to both houses of worship this morning. And um, I'm just trying to be sensitive, trying to be obedient to the Lord. Psalm 103, verse 1 down to verse 5. Bless, affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is deepest within me. Bless his holy name. Bless, affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul. And forget not one of all his benefits. Who forgives every one of all your iniquities. Who heals each one of all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and corruption. Who beautifies, dignifies, and crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. Who satisfies your mouth your necessity and desire at your personal age and situation with good so that your youth renewed is like the eagles, strong, overcoming, and soaring. By the way that this psalm, which really is a song, by the way it is written, it appears that David is having a conversation with himself. You, you ever talk to yourself? <laughs> I found out that it's all right. Uh, people may sometimes think you're going off a little bit. You know, they see you walking or in your car and your lips are moving and there's nobody else around you. And sometimes we're just giving thanks. Sometimes we're just giving praise. And I'm finding out that I don't need nobody around. Amen. Amen. To prompt me. Amen. To give thanks. Because 
he's been so good to me. And I know that he's been good to you. This conversation that seemingly he's having with himself is that he is instructing and encouraging, encouraging himself because he says, oh, my soul. And he's saying that you ought to affectionately and gratefully praise and bless his holy name affectionately. And it, it, it seems like uh, it, it's kind of fitting this morning. Uh, Tony and Carol, might, I might pick on you a little bit, you know, because you, when, when we think of being affectionate, and uh, I, I know from my own experience that it was quite a long time before I told God how much I loved him. It was, it was quite a long time. And sometimes it may be difficult for men to articulate to God how much we love him. But I'm so glad I moved past that now. Amen. And, and David says that we ought to affectionately, amen, praise God. Men, I hope you're telling your wives how much you love them. Amen. You're going quiet. Now, all of a sudden, the only person I hear is the anniversary people. <laughs> Everybody else is all silent. Listen to me. David says affectionately praise him and gratefully praise him. Sometimes we have to tell him, and there are many songs that are written out of this, Lord, I love you, and I worship you. You are worthy to be praised. Lord, I adore you, Lord. I exalt you, Lord. I extol you because there's nobody like you. There's none equal to you, and there's nobody to come after you, and there's nobody before you. Who is like unto the Lord our God? Lord, I thank you for your provision. I thank you for your protection. I thank you for your peace. I thank you for your power that keeps me. Lord, I just thank you. And when you look at this, David is saying here, I'm doing this from the bottom of my heart, down, way down deep within me. Because I'm thanking you. Because my journey, if it had not been for you, and I recognize it, and after I recognize it, I articulate it. That's why... As Brother Tony was saying, it ought to be a testimony time. It ought to be a time where we share the mic along the congregation so that everybody that wants to can say how good God has been to you. In, in the midst of your storm, he's been strong. In the midst of the valley, he's lifted you up. There ought to be a time, it may be coming soon to a church near you, where we have a testimony time whereby we can bless and affectionately and gratefully praise the Lord publicly. Amen. Amen. David said in another place, he says, I'm going to praise him in the great congregation when the saints are gathered. I'm going to down, I'm going to put away my inhibitions. I'm going to put down my anxiety. I'm going to put down what they call that word, um, my nervousness or whatever, whatever it is, because God, you've been so good to me. And I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself what the Lord has done for me. He says this, I'm praising him from the deepest part. If you look at verse 1, he says, and all that is deepest within me. Sometimes we just got to shout it. I, I, listen now, I know traditionally the Methodist church has been quiet. I, traditionally now, the Methodist church has been, ain't nothing wrong with that. But sometimes you got to make a joyful noise. Because the Bible commands it, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye land, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with singing. And there was a time. I, I, was, I was raised Pentecostal, 
and I went Methodist because I saw something in the Methodist church. Uh, and I, I, I went. I, I'm gone. I'm, I'll be back Pentecostal, but I, I see something that I need for the rest of my life. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And we, they're, 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 the Bible talks about the different kinds of worship and administrations and stuff. But oh, when you know that you're thankful. When you know how grateful you, have, you are for his involvement in your life. Oh, it comes from the deepest part of your being. And then in verse 2, he repeats it. Bless affectionately. Gratefully praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not. And I looked at this, and it, it, it stood out to me. The Lord kind of highlighted. He says, don't forget not one. Sometimes we need to itemize, Lord, you did this. Lord, you did this. Lord, you brought me through this. Lord, you brought me through the other. He says, not one of all his benefits. Sometimes we have to remind ourselves and we think of that, that old chorus when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul, my inner being cries out. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For saving me, for delivering me, for whatever it is, I give you praise for it. He says, don't forget not one. But when you look at the text this morning, and I, I only cho chose the first five verses, and it's a short list from what could very well be a very long list of how good God had been. If the truth be told, what would your list and my list look like? How long would it take you to articulate how good God has been? How long would it take you? Would somebody have to pull, as they say with preachers who they ask preachers sometimes to get up and pray and they start preaching and they say, well, we're going to pull your coattail. Would we have to pull your coattail to have you sit down because you become so overwhelmed with gratitude? And we look at this and we see from this short list the type of benefits that David begins to list and look at what tops the list of benefits. In verse 3 the top of the list, he says, he forgives. Every one of your iniquities. Oh, a slate that is clean and a conscience that is clear. God provides that. Praise be to God. That's why I believe the book of Hebrews and we sing this song that God is able to save from to the uttermost. And in some circles we say that God is saving from the guttermost to the uttermost. Because it doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. God can forgive it. Aren't you glad about it? It doesn't matter. He says he gives a this is what the Spirit of the Lord said to me. A slate that is clean and a conscience that is clear. And when things come back to your conscience, please know it's the enemy. It's the enemy that plays tricks on our minds. That's why we have to fill our mind with what the Word of God says and with what the Word of God is true because if you have been forgiven, you have been forgiven. Opportunity, he forgives opportunity for a fresh start and opportunity with free salvation. Turn over to Psalm 130, if you would please. Psalm 130, and uh, 
verses 3 down to verse 5. He says, if you, Lord, should keep account of and treat us according to our sins, O oh Lord, who could stand? I won't tell you about a clean slate because the other day, not too long ago, I had to apply for a visa uh, to, to get into the United States for a minor infraction that I had about, I don't know, over 40 years ago. And I had to go and get my visa renewed. And I had to go and get a police report. And take it, I'm telling you, take it to the U.S. consulate. And all that kind of stuff. And the police report came back and said, we, he, he has no record. <laughs> now, I had one, but the time had elapsed. Whereby after a certain time, they wipe it clean. I want to say to you that may be watching and that you in here that may be struggling, you may have to wait a certain time for man to clean your slate, but God cleans your slate right away. Hallelujah. There is no probation period. God sets it up and the Bible says, if I confess my sin, he's faithful right away. To forgive me of my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. That's why you got to love him. He says, who could stand? Verse 4, he says, but there is forgiveness with you. <laughs> and he puts down just what man needs. That you may be re reverently feared and worshipped. He says, I wait for the Lord. I wait in faith. I expectantly wait. And in his word do I hope. I am looking and waiting for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. I say more than watchmen wait for the morning. There was a time when we had the, the girls in, in university and we had two children in England at the same time. And I was doing... Uh, 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 Bellman's work, I was pastoring, and I was doing security work, and the security work was from 8 in the evening until 8 the next morning, and I was doing Bellman's work. I was working about 19 hours a day, and still preaching, still doing pastoral work, and one, the, the graveyard shift from 8 to 8 the next day. And one of the things that security people look for is daylight. Because you know <laughs> that your shift's coming to an end. And, and, and this was in the hotel. And, and uh, you know, you had to go around the property every hour so you couldn't get a nap. And you had to take one of those uh, uh, things that they put, the point, and make sure that you touched it and it registered in the computer. And all, so you couldn't go to sleep. And one of the things that would really sweeten me was when I saw the first chef come in. I said, morning's coming. <laughs> and David says right here, he says, um, I wait for the Lord and I'm looking and waiting for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. He said, that's how my focus is on God. I'm waiting, I'm watching, watch this now, and I'm anticipating the Lord to show up. I want to build your faith this morning. Anticipate the Lord showing up. Expect the Lord to show up on your behalf. If he can forgive, he can go past forgiveness and bring his blessings into your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Opportunity for a fresh start. He forgives. Number two, he heals each one of all your diseases, your diseases. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26 will tell us the promise that the Lord made to the children of Israel as they were coming out of Egypt and God says, I'm going to make a way for you that makes you distinct from all the other nations. And one of the things he says to them in verse 26, he says, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, your God, 
and do what is right in his sight and go listen to and obey his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases upon you which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he could do it way back then, he's still able to do it today. First Lady and I were talking, and she talks like this quite a lot. She's saying, I'm longing for the time because there, at open door, there are a lot of people that are afflicted. Sickness is rampant, not just in our congregation, but in our community. Sickness is rampant. It's heavy. And we were talking and she says, I'm longing for the time whereby we can gather and the people of God can receive healing without anybody laying hands on anybody. Just in worship and the spirit of the Lord just show up and the healing comes. I hope you're first. But if you're not first, we'll rejoice for somebody else. But I believe that the power of God, the same God that said this, is the same God that's able to do it today. And I believe that when the people of God come to worship, you know what happened in the book of Acts? The, the Bible says they were all together in one accord. They had one focus. They had one aim. They had one desire. And they worshiped the same one God. And God showed up and things began to happen. Oh, that we would return when people come into the house of God and we drop all of our agendas. Uh, and we drop all of our stuff and we focus on the true and the living God. Give him one hour of undivided attention and watch the healings begin to come. Because he said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And I'm believing that God is looking to do that in the midst of his people. I remember the song that says, in the midst of his people, the Lord said he would be. It doesn't take very many. It could be just two or three. But I feel his same sweet spirit that I felt oft times before. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. That's why I knew that Elder Tony was onto something this morning. When he said something's bound to happen, I believe that God is going to move even in our midst right now. That when, we, when you leave here, something in your house will be different. Something in your body will be different. Something in your mind will be changed. Uh, and he says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Jesus came and healed, the Bible says, by word and by touch but there are some people in the scriptures where they said to Jesus you don't have to come just say the word you got the power you you could you could Lord Jesus you can pray for somebody over the phone in Africa or Asia or Europe and God can show up and he has shown up and manifest his presence the reason why I praise God that we can gather in a place like this this morning and be in one accord is because we recognize not only do we recognize how Jesus but we revere the one that we recognize and he is among us hallelujah oh looking for and longing for the presence and power of God to manifest as we worship and healings that take place without prayer, just that we're open to God. Yes. And I'm believe, we're believing for it. We're praying for it. And we believe that we're going to see it. Number three, he redeems your life from the pit and corruption. There is help and there is hope. I'm, 
I, I, I'm so glad and convinced that no matter how low a person goes, how far, as we used to say, that person's going so far out left field, God still sees them. God can still reach them. God can still save them. God can still bless them. And God can still redeem them. There is help and there is hope. And David had found himself in a pit. And that word corruption speaks of decay where the life is withering away because of the sin that does so easily beset people. Decay and loss. David, the same one, had gotten himself in trouble, in deep trouble, with adultery and accessory to murder. I mean, it don't get much worse than that. And as he got himself in that trouble, <laughs> God sent somebody by, <laughs> I believe it was Nathan the prophet, and had a talk with him. <laughs> Have a little talk with Jesus. <laughs> Tell him all about your troubles. <laughs> and they, they, they began to talk, and, and uh, Nathan was telling him all about the things that this person never called him by name. This person has done, and this, he's done this. He's, and David got in, did, what? He did that? You, he ought to be this and that and all of that. And Nathan said, yeah, you the man. You've been caught, David. And understanding the redemptive work and power and grace and goodness of God found in Psalm 51. Look at Psalm 51. Pardon me as I take my time this morning. But how important it is that we understand that these benefits, and I, I've entitled this message this morning, Don't Forget. Let's not forget Psalm 51, verses 1 to 4, and then from 7 to 17. Psalm 51. David says, Have mercy <laughs> upon me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to the multitude of your tender mercy and loving kindness, blot out my transgressions. There is forgiveness and there is redemption. Then he says, wash me thoroughly and repeatedly from my iniquity and guilt and cleanse me and make me wholly pure from my sins. For I am conscious of my transgressions and I acknowledge them, my sin is ever before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight. You know, let me pause there. Sometimes we have to get honest with God with what he already knows. Sometimes, you know, we have to be careful that we don't pray to God like he don't know. Oh, we got to say, Lord, I know you know, you know. <laughs> Lord, I am ac acutely and keenly aware that you are sovereign, yes. that you are omniscient, yes. that you are omnipresent. And so I'm not telling you what you don't know. I'm telling you to get it off my chest. To get it out of my heart. And this is why we can have the freedom and the cleansing that God so desires. He says, you and you only have I done which is evil in your sight. So that you are justified in your sentence. And faultless in your judgment. Look at verse 7. Then he says, purify me with hyssop. And I shall be clean ceremonially. Wash me and I shall in reality be whiter than snow. Then he says, now take me back. Make me to hear joy and gladness and be satisfied. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my guilt and iniquity. Create in me 
a clean heart, O God, and renew a right, persevering and steadfast spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors, transgressors your way. And then, praise God, sinners shall be converted and return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness and death. O oh God, the God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness, your rightness and your justice. Sometimes when we go before God and we're honest with him, and he begins to flood our very lives with the fresh sense of his divine presence. And then we know that we are right before him. Listen, saints of God, this is part of the short list that David is talking about. Forgiveness, healing, redemption, and then look at one number four. He says, he redeems your life. Wow. He purchases you back from the pit and corruption who beautifies. See, one thing about God that we're learning is that he doesn't just take us from one place to the next and leave us. He says, after I've done the work in you, I'm going to do a work in you. He says, I'm going to beautify and dignify and crown you with loving kindness and tender mercy. If David would have gone before Pilate, Caligula, or one of the Roman emperors, he would have never survived. He would have never, ever got out of prison or even escaped the death penalty. But God who is rich in mercy. Yeah. Listen, saints of God. That's why we can go before him. Listen, okay, thank you, Father. There are some things that mankind, Jesus, have gotten away with from the law, but have not gotten away with it from God. See, God can speak to your conscience and give you sleepless nights and restless days while the man's still looking for you. He come in the hills, he's going all around knocking on people's doors. Have you seen him? Have you seen her? Have you witnessed anything? No, we ain't seen nobody nowhere. And God's speaking to the individual. As they say, whither can I flee from your spirit? If you look at this, and we see how he beautifies and crowns. I hope this helps somebody this morning that God in his beautification and dignifying and crowning us, he restores self-worth and self-esteem. There are people that have been beaten down by life and sin and they come to Christ and Christ begins a work of restoring and beautifying and next thing you know they're back in society they're back in church they're back serving in many ways because their self-worth and their self-esteem has been restored their life has been beautified with his salvation the balm of his word and the ministry of his spirit Applied generously to hurts, wounds, and pain. God says, I crown you with loving kindness and tender mercies. I want to repeat this because the Bible says there is a balm in Gilead that heals the sin sick soul. Oh, yes, it is. I think there's somebody in here that's glad about it this morning. I want to say to you as I was listening to the Spirit that the bomb 
of his word. Take his word seriously. If God says you're forgiven, you are forgiven. If God says you're restored, you are restored. And take the word and apply the word as balm to your wounds, as healing to your body. Listen, when you do this and you take the balm of his word, confidence comes back to you. Restoration comes back to you. And when we take the word that's ministered to us by his spirit, we apply it generously. Praise God to hurts, wounds, and pain. There's no better remedy for the hurts of life than the word of the living God. The balm in Gilead that heals and restores. Number five, he satisfies. <laughs> your mouth, your necessity and desire at your personal age and situation with good so that your youth renewed is like the eagles, strong, overcoming, and soaring. He fills me with good so that my youth is renewed. And your necessity and desire at your personal age and situation. I began to think about this and, and I'm saying, a 16-year-old doesn't need what a 60-year-old needs. God says, I'm taking into account where you are. I'm taking into account your personal situation. And I'm going, oh, Jesus, I'm going to meet the need right where you are. Are you listening to what the word is saying this morning? He said, I'm going to satisfy you. And when it comes to you, you're going to feel stronger. You're going to feel renewed. You're going to feel revived. That's what he does. Listen to this now. He takes you. And we have to trust God to do what's right and best. I heard him say to me, some things I'm not mature enough to handle. And then he says, some things I should have outgrown the desire for. Selah. Can I repeat that in your hearing? Some things... I'm not mature enough to handle. I believe, I believe with all my heart that God wanted to bless me with a ministry like this. I wasn't thinking about it. I wasn't planning it. I wasn't looking for it. And neither was I ready for it. But when the right time came, when the right time came, I wasn't mature enough to handle Two congregations. I might have had the physical strength, but not the mental and spiritual maturity. But when the right time. Oh, y'all ain't going to hear me this morning. Some things I'm not mature enough to handle. And some things I should have outgrown the desire for. He satisfied. Look at Exodus chapter 23. Let's go back on the journey. For Are you doing all right this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Exodus chapter 23. And if you look at verse 25. <laughs> the children of Israel are getting instructions for the journey. God want to take them to the wilderness and take them to the promised land. Maybe somebody's listening. You may feel like you're in a wilderness this morning. Don't jump off the camel. Stay on the camel. The camel's moving a little slow. You know, you ever seen a camel gallop? Not too much. They move slow, but they know where they're going. Are you listening now? 
God got, had these people in the wilderness. And sometimes we think we're in the wilderness as well. It's nothing new and you are not out of the ordinary because you are experiencing a little wilderness journey. And he says this, you shall serve the Lord, your God. And look at what, you just love this. He shall bless your bread and your water. Jesus. That encompasses your whole life. Now, I didn't come up here to talk about food to you all this morning. The Lord brought it up. You talk to him about it. But I'm telling you what he said. I'm going to bless your bread and I'm going to bless your water. And I will. And here he's talking about the sickness again. And I will take sickness from your midst. You want to see a people that's heavy, happy, got everything they need, and they're well enough to enjoy it. Hallelujah. Satisfies your mouth. Now the deal, look at what God said to me. He takes you from provision to prosperity. Provision is just enough. Pro pro prosperity is enough to give. That you got enough for you. You got some in store and you're giving out to other people. God says, if you stay with me, if you follow my word, I will take you from provision to prosperity and how satisfied you will be. Oh, I'm happy in the Lord this morning. I, I will say this because I'm going to conclude now. I was right coming up the road this morning and just driving up the road and I said, and this voice came and said, what's this all about? Ministry. You're getting up in front of people twice a Sunday, Wednesday nights. You're doing funerals all the time, weddings, vow renewals, speaking the word of God. You're in the word for hours and hours a day. You're in prayer between 3.30 and 5.30 mornings. And something in my mind, what's it? I said, devil, you are a liar. Somebody's being helped. Somebody's being strengthened. Somebody's being encouraged. And God says, that's my word. That's my people. That's my church. You're just my servant. You go and do what I've instructed you to do. I will fill you. I will help you. I will aid you. I will enrich you. I will empower you. You just do what I've told you to do. And I'll satisfy you. Hallelujah. This is a short list that David wrote. Question is, what does your list look like? And I'm sure that these five things that are mentioned here, all of us are included in those five things. And all of us have more that we can articulate. We, Lord, if, if I had the mic, Everybody in here said, Lord, if they give me the mic, I'm going to take up all the time in the church this morning because you've been so good to me. You've satisfied my, and you've restored my life. You've kept me. You've blessed me. My offspring, my this, my that is just a blessing. This is a short lived. And I encourage everyone in here this morning from verse 2, don't forget. That's the crux of the message. Don't forget his benefits. If he's brought you from somewhere, give him the praise for it. Recognize him for it publicly and privately. When he elevates you on your job, give him the glory for it. If you're a child of his, give him the praise for it. Recognize him in all your ways. Acknowledge him. Thank him publicly. Cry publicly. Tears of joy publicly. Because you know, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. That's what David says, where would I be? So, I say to you, don't forget to look back. 
Don't forget to go back and don't forget to give back. Look back. Even sometimes when we had either knowingly or unknowingly turned my back on God. And sometimes we didn't even realize it. I look back and see where he's brought me from. Don't forget to look back. Praise him, bless him, glorify him and honor him. I said it just now because if it had not been. Don't forget, after you look back, to go back in your memory and in your experience when you answered the call to salvation. I hope that when, we, when you and I think about salvation, that it remains to be so fresh, like yesterday. Like the De Silvas, still on honeymoon, like yesterday. I told you I was going to pick on you just a little bit. Let's keep our salvation experience fresh. And you know how we keep it fresh? The Bible says when I remember that his mercies are new every morning, how faithful he has been. Keep it fresh that the blood that cleanses you and washes you and the spirit that fills you and renews you, keep it fresh when you get up in the morning. Don't forget the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run in and they are safe. Go back in your memory. Some, before we got the call to salvation, were in despair. Go back. Some, before we got the call to salvation, were in depression. Go back in your memory and experience. Some, before we got the call to salvation, our lives we're in disarray and God has ordered our steps, brought it together, brought my life together. God's, I'm telling you, God's word will bring your life together. Some of us, God's word has brought our lives together. And we thank him for it. Yeah, it takes discipline. God is a God of order. And thank God that he's a God of order and discipline. That's why we're living like we're living. Yeah. I'm looking at all here, and most probably 99.9% .9 and the other percent's not here. You're living large. 99.9999.99.99. The other nine's not here. So I can't include them. But all of us, to the degree of God's blessing, I'm not talking about comparing your life with somebody else. I'm talking about satisfying you from where you are. That you're living large. That today, I'm, I'll use food for this. Today, you can have Vienna sausage or steak if you want to. Or you can have peanut butter or crab sandwich if you want to. I'm sorry, I just, that came off the top of my head. You see what I'm saying? That we are living a good life. Yeah, thank you, Lord. And in this island of Bermuda, in the midst of everything that may be going on or may not be going on, I turn on the news and thank God for this island. Thank God for this island. Thank God for this island. I look back and see, listen, look out and look at the Harrington Sound. And know that I could jump overboard and swim to the other side and not be afraid of a shark coming for me. That's the goodness of God to this island. All kinds of goodness in this island. You better stop it and give him the praise and the glory. Hallelujah. I remember when I got to go. I, re I remember when we were younger and go over to John Smith's beach. And the guys used to go down the beach and swim out to the reef and stand on the reef and not be afraid of sharks coming. Thank God for this island. Hallelujah. I'll say this and finish. We're living large. 
after we go back in memory. Despair, depression, disarray, and desperation. Some of us were in before we got saved. Now I look at you. Give me a wave, sister. Give me a little wave offering. Oh, look at me now. It's the grace of our Lord. It's the God's grace on my life. And the reason why God's grace is on my life like this is because I am allowing God does not do what we don't allow, that I'm allowing God's grace to have its place in my life. Hallelujah. Look back, go back, and give back. Your time, your treasure, and your talent. Give it back. Give it back. Give it back to the kingdom of God. Show your appreciation for God in giving back. Don't just look back. Don't just go back. Give back your time, your treasure, and your talent. I pray that God would be pleased with his church in this day and time. And Lord God, we thank you. We praise you. We love you this morning. We're not afraid. We're not ashamed. We're not embarrassed to say how much we love you because you've done so much for us. Lord, we yield ourselves so that you can do more. Lord, if you identify any areas in our lives that are lacking, show it up, O oh God, that we might tighten up the reins, O oh God, not with religious activity, but with a vibrant relationship with you, O oh God. Let your joy flood every soul in this place this morning. Let your healing melt. Ape. Hallelujah. Ah, Sister Chardonnay not feeling well. She's feeling better now. Amen. I declare and decree she's feeling better now. Somebody else might have come in here this morning not feeling well. They're feeling better now. We're praying, oh God, that somebody that's got to go back to the doctor, that the doctors will baffle and marvel that God has been there. There has been a visitation because the God that heals us showed up for us. If you're watching this program this morning by Facebook, and you are looking back, but you've never accepted the Lord Jesus, and your life is in disarray, despair, in desperation, if you are that person, give it to him today. If you have anybody in here this morning that you are experiencing the residual effect of disarray and confusion, give it to him this morning and walk in further newness of life. I declare and decree that this household of faith is blessed because the Lord our God in the midst of thee is mighty and we give him the praise, we give him the glory, and we give him the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you praise him for a moment? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. I love being right, and I love being right again, because um, 
Oh, it's so amazing. I just love what God is doing and doing in the life of the church and, um, you know, and how um, the pastor shared um, that good word today. Man, just give me a minute and a half, okay, a minute and 45 seconds. Um, just to, to, before we take up the offering, just want to bring a couple of things um, to our attention in the way of things that, that I've noticed. And um, just for some folk who would not even say I did that or what have you, but um, if you notice even the um, walkway, um, how sparkling clean, and, and, and Sergio actually brought that to my attention um, um, the, other, the other day. And he said to me, he said, look, look at, and I said, what? And I didn't see anything. And that was the point. I didn't see anything. It wasn't dirty. And so uh, they're pointing, yes, we know. It was um, Brother Ed, yes, um, who came out and, and did a wonderful job. The thing is that, I don't know if Brother Ed knows is when you do something well, um, the expectation is that you do it all the time. So, um, so but we want to thank you um, um, for that, but we certainly appreciate that. And just some, some other things, even with the, the, the picnic and people who came together, bought items, fish or whatever it was, and made that all happen, know that we don't take those things for granted. You know, that um, you did it of yourselves in and, and such a way that you poured out your heart and, and some of us benefited uh, more than others with all of that. So we do appreciate that. I, um, you know, there was this thing back in the day, you, know, you probably didn't experience this in primary school, but it was a thing where you said, I'm going to tell my mama. And now if you did that, I'm going to tell my mama. Well. I think about that, but it's now it's like, I'm going to tell my God. I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell him on you. And one of the things that I'm learning, even on our Saturday prayer, if you're not a part of that experience, that we can tell God everything. Yeah. And he wants to hear it. And I'm learning, I am learning that, um, that I can call names. And I don't just do the generic pray for my family. I'm calling my siblings' names every time I get a chance to pray. I pray for Andre. I pray for Al. I pray for Tanya, Tracy, Kathy. Every time I get a chance to pray. Because for those who don't know him like I know him, I want them to know him like I know him. I'm learning some things. I'm learning about whose report shall we believe. And I believe the report of the Lord. Amen. So when I see out of the silver walking through down the, the um, aisle here, that's because some of us are praying. Amen. Right? And it was said that, you know, he may not be coming out for something, but we've seen him twice in a row. And I know this. That there are some of us who are not well even today. But I'm made to understand that God's word says that even the elders will pray for you. And if you would share when you're not well, um, and bring it to the attention. If no one else, bring it to the attention of the elders so that we could, we could pray for you, okay? And watch what God will do, okay? I'm thankful for my mom who's saying that her back is not paining her, uh, having that pain like she's, she's once had. And, and she tells me how she's trusting in God. So it's wonderful, the God that we serve. So today I believe that what we've heard is not an accident that you're here, um, even if you were to share it with someone else. I'm going to confess this and then I'm done. That I try to be careful even when I'm at school, you know, as a... Uh, is almost that separation, but I know that there are some kids who are hurting. When I say they're hurting, teachers, we are on the front line, and you guys didn't even hear about it. But when I saw that young lady crying, and it was pain, and she was having a difficult time, I just said, you mind if I pray for you? And she had a little glow on her face that said, please pray for me. She said, yes, Mr. DeSoto. 
I prayed for. And that little girl put a smile on her face that lasted all through the week. And I know I'm just trying to trust God. I didn't get in trouble, thank God, for that. But I know that I'm just trying to be bold in Christ and, and, and do what he says. Amen? Amen? So let's share a good word. It must be something that was shared today that we can tell somebody else. Let's just take that upon ourselves to share the good news with someone else. Brother Orville, um, not here today because he's on, I guess, Army duty. And so we want to uh, make sure that we, we remember him. Sister Ed is flying in today, I believe. So we were asked for traveling mercies, asked God that he would provide traveling mercies. Um, and even my niece, not well today, Sister Chardonnay. And um, I know the work that she does up here is a great work, and God is so very pleased with what she does. And I don't take her for granted either. And even for the ushers, and the ushers that we have, and the new ushers that we have, we thank you for what you do. Amen. And if I've let you out, I do apologize. I'm not wanting to write notes like this. I don't do that, but there's one. Uh, yes, of course, Brother Sergio, I'm sorry. Brother Sergio is about to take flight again. So if any of you looking for what, um, so the flying miles, what you call them? You can get them from Brother Sergio. I know he has, I know that he has enough. So he's going off, I believe, for two weeks, I believe. So we would remember him and even his family in prayer, okay? If I've not covered everything, it's probably because I've not covered everything. Sister Manola. Miss Ray, yes. Okay, this Sister Ray is telling um, everyone to keep her in prayer. And of course, we will do that. All right, that's good. We won't keep you much longer now. We're going to have our offering. I asked the ushers if they would help with that. <laughs> 